With that being said, let's try to understand the industry segmentation, financial services. And by segmentation, I mean the fact that the industry is not a monolith. When you look at a large global bank, you know, it has a wide range of activities that they perform in different sectors. And each of these sectors is serving different needs and catering to different kinds of customers. And Industry segmentation is extremely important for practitioners to understand uh, because it helps us target specific markets which have specific customer needs and tailoring IT and technology to meet these diverse needs. So when we talk about the global financial services, there are what we call segments. And this is a framework that I've developed over the years in terms of how to think about global banking. On one side on the left, we have the segments of banking, right? And while there might be more from an academic uh, standpoint, for our purposes, uh, we like to think about six broad categories of segments of banks. And these include retail banking, capital markets, payments, wealth and asset management, investment management, and fintech. And some practitioners like to lump insurance along with these, but I think insurance is a different uh, industry by itself, even though large banks have attached insurers uh, as part of the operation where they provide insurance services to consumers and to companies. Uh, but that's a different course in terms of how we look at it from an industry talk, talk stack standpoint. And all of these segments have different cross-sectional, cross-cutting needs, which are common to all of them. So we'll, we'll discuss that on the right side. But again, in terms of segments itself, retail banking, uh, which is shown in blue on the left, is one of the, the, the biggest uh, parts of banking, global banking. And these are banks that touch individuals like you and I every day. This is where we have checkings and savings accounts, where we manage our money, we receive our, our salaries, uh, and we save for the future. Uh, so there's a wide variety of transactional services that are provided that include things like direct deposits, money transfers, bill payments, debit cards. And they also provide access to credit services such as credit cards and home loans and things of that nature. And for those of us who are planning, you know, for the long term, you have IRAs, which are retirement accounts for individuals, certificates of deposits or CDs, and also typically access to some kind of brokerage service. The key thing is retail banking is somewhat boring in terms of how they go to market. But with the advent of digital technology, uh, you've had a lot of innovation that's come into the retail banking space, whether that's be open banking or the fact that they're now battling with fintechs to basically save you know, their role in how an individual approaches his or her financial or their financial needs. And they are, are their overall very big contributor to economic activity. Capital markets on the other side is really where financial securities are brought or sold. These include things like bonds, stocks, derivatives. And these markets serve as a long-term vital source of financing for businesses and governments and also individuals. And this is where, you know, you basically, you know, work with, you know, trading platforms and exchanges like stock exchanges, bond markets, commodity exchanges. And, you know, a lot of these are household names, right? New York Stock Exchange, Tokyo Stock Exchange, London Stock Exchange, so on and so forth. Uh, but capital markets are really where individuals plan also for their, for their portfolios. And, you know, you basically, you know, are there to, you know, trade on your brokerage account or to basically, you know, buy and sell securities, right? For those of you who like to dabble or, or, or deal in the stock market. Payment service, on the other hand, is a wide segment, which is extremely technology focused and friendly, uh, perhaps more than retail banking, or even in some cases, capital markets. But what the payment services segment does is it has payment services providers, payment gateways, digital wallets, mobile payment solutions, et cetera. And the key thing to keep in mind here is this segment caters to both individuals and businesses and it enables seamless and secure transactions. And we'll talk about that in its own dedicated module as with the other aspects of the segments. So each of these segments has their own dedicated module in the program, in the course. Wealth management and asset management or WMA as it's known, WAM, sorry, is basically, you know, professional management of various types of assets and investments. And the terms wealth management and asset management are often used in an interchangeable manner, you know, but they basically represent at times you know, different while overlapping areas of financial management. Wealth management is a comprehensive management approach to financial planning for individuals who are high net worth. Maybe they have investable assets of 5 million or more, depending on the bank you work with, the tier you're placed in. Uh, but they provide these financial service solutions that are geared to your different individual needs, right? And tailored to your long-term financial goals. On the other hand, 
Asset management refers to the professional management investment investments. Uh, these are at times individuals, but also corporations. So pension funds, endowments, insurance companies. And a lot of the asset management investment decisions are made on based on thorough market research and analysis. And they're looking to do two things. They're looking to maximize returns, at the same time, minimize risk to their clients' objectives and risk tolerance. Uh, so asset management industry manages everything from equities, which are stocks, bonds, uh, real estate, commodities, and alternative investment vehicles such as hedge funds and even private equity. Uh, so again, uh, we'll talk about asset and wealth management in their own module, but just know that for now that it's a significant player in the global financial system because it takes funds from investors and channels them into different sectors of the economy and thus contributing to you know economic growth. Uh, so things like diversification, and using technology-driven alternatives is extremely important here. So we'll talk about robo-advisory when we get there. And the other is investment management, right? This is money management or portfolio management segment, which is, you know, you've got investors that have key specific investment goals, and you want to use these goals to drive investment allocation. Uh, investment schemes, so on and so forth. And they also provide, investment managers also provide a wide range of ancillary services, advisory services, such as financial planning, risk management. And again, the workflow is the same, right? You basically try to understand your client's investment goals, risk tolerance, and different financial aspirations, and then develop a personalized investment strategy. And uh, the rise of technology has greatly impacted investment management in a big way. So things like robo-advisory, algorithmic trading, uh, are very important where you're using algorithms to basically an AI to manage investments than using a traditional human manager uh, based approach as well. And finally, you have the, the fintech segment of uh, the industry, which is basically technology driven financial services that are disrupting traditional financial institutions. And, you know, fintechs are basically operating across the board in all the other five segments. Uh, we'll talk about them in their own module. Uh, but the idea is there is to leverage new technology without having the technical debt or the burden that the other industries uh, that traditional players carry. 